Hey everyone, it is George Karos, and I wanted to do kind of a recap podcast from my last year. And if you remember at this time last year, and you probably don't, <laughs> I do, but around this time last year, I had released a blog or a podcast titled Change the Opportunity to Do Something Amazing. And I let people know my family and I were moving to Orlando, Florida. And I love this opportunity just to kind of talk about some things I've learned over the last year. It's just time to revisit. I'm a really big believer in the idea to truly move forward. We have to look back. Um, the things that we did right, the things that could have gone better. And I just want to share some of the lessons. I, I haven't done just a podcast without doing a book review, without talking about, you know, talking with a guest in a while. And weirdly enough, I was really nervous to do this. Just kind of talking to nobody can be kind of intimidating. I have this weird thing. If you put me in front of thousands of people, I'm very comfortable. And because you get feedback right away, you know, if you're saying something that's resonating, uh, you get that feedback immediately. If something doesn't resonate, you can switch. Whereas when you're just talking to a camera and a microphone, it becomes daunting to me. I have a phobia. So maybe the worst phobia that other people have. But I just wanted to share a, a, a few things. And last year at this time, when I was uh, posting that podcast, I knew I was about to take a very long drive from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada to Orlando, Florida, and kind of projected to be about three or four days. Uh, it, it was one day shorter than what it was supposed to be because I, I drove with my brother and we just went as far as we could every single day. And weirdly enough, I remember for months, I was terrified of that drive. It was scary to me, not because of the move, but because of my dogs. And the reason I was nervous because of my dogs is my oldest dog, Odom, who is like my baby. Um, Odom is my baby. He follows me around. He's sitting outside my office right now as I record this podcast. He's always, when I'm home, he's always within 10 feet of me. Uh, he has, he has um, diabetes and I have to give him insulin every single day. And I didn't know how he'd do on the drive. I didn't know if it'd be overwhelming. I didn't know if he'd struggle with it. I was a little bit nervous about Cooper, but Odom, uh, because of the diabetes and because of the insulin, I was nervous. And they actually, and I know this doesn't seem to make sense, but they, they're used to just kind of, when I lived in Canada, I, we just let them out and they would go to the bathroom, do their thing, come back in. So I was nervous because I ha would have to walk them every single day for them to go to the bathroom. And it was really not their norm. So I went on the first day, did it by myself to go pick up my brother in Saskatoon. And they were great. I was like, okay, well, that's okay. It was a six hour drive. It wasn't too bad. They seemed to be okay. And then every single day, um, the rest of the trip, I would do the same pattern. Uh, we'd be in a hotel. I would take my dogs for a walk and then uh, get in the car, start driving, stop somewhere to eat, take my dogs out, let them go to the bathroom, and then drive, get to the hotel, take them for a walk, sleep. There was a pattern there. And what was really weird, I wasn't used to walking them. It wasn't something I had really done. They had a big yard and they were able to uh, run around. And I loved it. The, the opportunity to walk my dogs, they were so excited every morning. They just loved it. And what was really weird was what I was once terrified of doing actually was a really great experience. And sometimes our anxiety is things that we can't control in the future but if you make the best of the present, that's where you learn things. And I actually picked up this lesson from my daughter Kalia before we had moved here. Uh, we went to Disney World and uh, she wanted to go on rides. I'm not a big ride guy. She's really excited about it. So I wanted to try. And I said, do you want to try a roller coaster? The one ride I'm kind of comfortable with are roller coasters. I can't actually spin around on a vertical axis, but roller coasters I seem to do fine with. She's like, yeah, I'd love to go. And she, we went on a uh, Space Mountain. And Space Mountain is a, you know, it's a little bit older ride. And 
as we were getting in line, I was seeing people arrive. I'm like, oh my God, is this a good idea or not? Like, is this a bad idea? And so I was getting a little nervous and Clea saw all the same things I was saying. And I said, are you okay? Do you, are you sure you want to go on this? She's like, yeah, of course I want to go on it. And this is like, she's, uh, she's five years old. And I was getting a, a little bit nervous about the process. And as we got closer and closer, I said to her, are you scared? Are you scared of going? She said, dad, I can't be scared of something I've never experienced. I was like, well, it's, it's pretty impre- impressive and it's a good lesson because I, I tend to get terrified of things I've never experienced. And um, then we went on the ride and I was terrified the whole time. I never actually paid attention to the roller coaster. I just watched Kalia. <laughs> and I will be honest with you. She was terrified. She said, why would you make me go on the ride? It was horrible. And maybe, maybe it's not the best lesson to, to kind of learn. But I thought it was funny that her attitude, and then she experienced said, yeah, not for me. Roller coaster is not my thing. And then we would go on some smaller roller coasters. She was fine with that. And maybe one day we'll go on Space Mountain again. But that, what she said to me, how can you be scared of something that you've never experienced was really something that put into perspective to me. And I, I realized that after the fact, maybe a little too late. And the experience that I have with my dogs, something I was terrified, wasn't just not horrible. It was actually good. And ever since I moved here, if I'm home, the days I'm not traveling, I'm not speaking, I walk my dogs when the morning is the first thing I do when I get up. And it's the last thing I do before I go to bed. And every time I get up in the morning, they're watching me and their tails start wagging. They're so excited. And their excitement leads to my excitement. And to have them just looking forward to something first thing in the morning is a really great lesson for me. And I've made it a part of my routine. And I can tell you, I'm so grateful that I actually had that experience that I was scared about. And then I learned something from it and I now apply it in my everyday life. So just something for you to kind of think about as you're going through some changes, maybe trying some new things as you're going into the summer, going into the school year. And so now I wanted to just kind of talk about like, what are some things that have actually got better um, in my life and just kind of, cause you know, we made this change and one of the things I, you know, and I talked about last year was I kind of just kind of was feeling stuck. Like we were just kind of in a rut and you can make these drastic changes in your life, but if you don't actually initiate or do something with a change, you're going to be in a totally different place with the exact same attitude. Uh, uh, I remember working with a school uh, years ago and it was a brand new school. And one of the things that I said to them is don't do the old stuff in a new building. And that's something I really embraced myself is that I'm in this new place and it will only be new and only new opportunities will be created. If I choose to create them, it can be, if I just move and do everything exactly the same as I've done before, then it wasn't really, it was just kind of a pain to just go through this move. So here are some things that have got uh, better in my life. And I, I, I'm a, I'm a pretty positive person in many cases. And I think it's uh, a survival skill I have. I wanted to actually say like, maybe, you know, what do I miss? The one thing I do miss is honestly the brick wall behind me. And I, I miss my office back in Edmonton. And as you know, I love my family and uh, weirdly enough, they seem to be seeing me a lot more now that I live in Florida because they don't want to be in Canadian winters. So I see them more than what I used to, but I actually don't really know of a negative um, since we moved here. And maybe it's my attitude. Um, partly because of that I've, I've really enjoyed the experience. It's not like everything's been good and every day has been, you know, um, butterflies and Disney characters <laughs> in my purview, but uh, it's been good. So w- what has improved since uh, I moved here? And I think the first one and the biggest one is just having more time uh, with my family. And what was one of the big reasons we moved in the first place was I was traveling out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, which is, you know, a, a big city, but not a major airport. And the majority of my work was in the United States. And now I am often speaking at events and home for dinner, which is really cool in totally different cities, uh, different parts of the country because most of my work is in the U.S. And it just really reminded me how much that time matters. And I, 
I am so blessed that I have a great family and I have a job that I love and I feel I don't have to like, you know, give up one for the other. And that's such a blessing. But I was thinking about this, uh, you know, how does this pertain to people that, you know, little things that we do in our life, like commutes, uh, things like that, getting to work. I remember I used to have to commute to work and how much time I spent just in a car by myself that I could have been doing so many other things. And I didn't have a family at that time. And time is something you just don't get back. So that to me has been really beneficial. And the thing that I really try to focus on is when I'm working and uh, when I'm in different places, I'm totally present. And when I'm home, I'm totally present at home, not home and present at my work. And little things that I've made routines in my life of spending with my family and routines when I'm at home and I have to work uh, in my home office. I think that's something that is really important to me. And one of the messages I really try to share with groups is that, hey, it is great to be totally immersed in your work, totally love what you do. But when you go home, don't be totally immersed in your work. And that's, that's a balance. And I, I feel that I'm getting way better at I still got a long way to go. But it, it is really, really um, helped me. The second thing that I wrote down that um, has been really an improvement in my life is being in a totally new place. I feel that I'm a lot more like my kids in the sense that I everything's new to me. You know, I'm going to new places. I don't know how to get around places. I'm going and there's if you live in Orlando, there's a million things to do, uh, especially with families with kids. And the cool thing is I've, I remember writing a blog post about how wonderful it is to kind of see the world through my kids' eyes because everything is the greatest experience. Everything is the coolest thing ever. And we become numb to things as adults because we've just seen them over and over again. And the thing is, everything is new to me. But what I really try to learn is to appreciate things that I see or experience I have like it is my first time, like it is my kids. And having that wonder and curiosity that my kids have when they experience these things, that having that excitement. And I can't remember if it's Ted Lasso or a book I was reading, but it said something that happiness is truly found when you always have something to look forward to. And what are those things I look forward to? And it's just kind of, seeing new things, but also seeing things through my kids' eyes and just feeling that appreciation of what they have to do that. So my suggestion and my thought in how this ties to maybe education, to life, when you go back um, to your schools, to your classrooms, to your jobs, don't become numb to what's always been there. Try to look at it like it's your very first time. And if it doesn't make sense, maybe it doesn't need to be there. Uh, I always share the story about how I first started as an administrator and I walked into a building that was like 75 years old and everything was new to me, but people in that place, not because of anything negative about them, but just were used to things. So I started asking questions like, why do we do this? Why do we do this? And that changed a lot of things to improve the environment for everybody. That was really important to me. So just kind of looking at things in a new in a new way and the same way my kids do has been um, really, really beneficial. Uh, the third thing that I wrote down is I am posting less on social media and I, I see that as a positive thing. It's not that I don't think social media can be valuable. And I also, I, I'm, I'm really struggling with this in my brain is there's a lot of information about how social media is bad for kids. And I agree with that. I also don't think keeping your kids off of social media totally. And then just all of a sudden when they're 18, they just jump on it is really helpful either. I think there has to be this balance of teaching kids. I don't think any problems ever been solved by ignoring it until a certain date. You have to kind of guide and go through that process. And I use this, but I don't get obsessed with it. I don't get obsessed with, um, following counts and how many people like my stuff or anything like this. I just share what I'm thinking. I share what matters to me. I share based on what my principles and my values are. 
And I wrote this down. This, this is something that I was thinking about is that when you, when you focus on sharing your principles, you tend to do what you believe is right. When you focus on gaining followers, you focus on what would get liked. And those two things don't always match that you will say things just to get the attention. You will say things just so people give you, and it's not about actually helping people. It's not about trying to make the lives of others better. It's trying to bring attention your way. And that to me is not something I'm really focused on. My focus, and I I actually just wrote a blog post about this, is to really kind of share my learning and hope somebody along the way will learn from me. I'm, I'm not the expert of anything, but I, I do have an experience. I do have perspectives. And if my journey and the things I'm learning along the way can help somebody, great. If they help nobody, then that's not really the focus. It's really kind of sharing this. I, I also talked about this in an Instagram post. I also look at everything on, I post on social media as like a VHS tape that I am giving to my kids when I'm no longer here. It is kind of amazing to think about how much more access they will have to see their dad, what they thought, um, how he connected. And I, I, I take great pride in that. So how I interact with people, what I share, this is a diary I'm leaving to my kids. So yes, uh, I do see value in social media, but I also think that it is very important that you use in a way that helps you grow and in turn that will help others grow but but i'm not talking about growing your following count but actually growing as a person and i think if you stick with your principles that that will be um, the best pursuit of what you're doing Um, the fourth thing and i wrote five things the the fourth thing is uh i really trying to grow my network outside of education but trying to bring some of those lessons back into what i'm doing uh, I was thinking about this. I, I share a lot of posts about working out, exercise, and some people make comments about like, oh, you're just posting, you know, gym selfies and stuff like this too. <laughs> the, the point of education is to help people grow. It's to help people get better. And the learning I've done to get my health in better check, not just my physical health, but more importantly, my mental health, which I think has actually led to improvements in my physical health is learning it is connected to education and when i moved here a a friend of mine who's become somewhat of a mentor he said i asked him like how do you know all these people and he said when i moved here i made it my business to know uh people to meet and connect with them and so i've met with people outside of education i look at what they do and i try to pick up lessons from them and then think how would this apply to what we do in school how does this apply to leadership and it, it, it can be really easy to think like a lot of times I've been guilty of this saying like, Oh, education, you know, has this big problem. Oh, oh, you know, like here's an issue that we have in schools. And then when you start to connect outside of it, you start to realize some of the problems that uh, we face in education are actually faced in other industries. Now they have totally different perspectives, different experiences, but what are the things that I can learn from outsiders and bring them into the work that I do in education and just kind of connecting with people and learning from them and seeing that, you know, there's so much value that it can be brought back to education. But also I think, and I was so uh, lucky to do this. I actually did a keynote for a, um, a group of scientists, which trust me, if you know anything about me, science is not my strong suit, but they wanted to learn about the idea of innovation, how I saw it. And one of the things I was really proud of was how I was sharing the lessons I learned in education and how they apply to the business world. And too often we focus on the business world and bringing those ideas back to education, but the business world doesn't look to us enough. And I think there's so much they can learn about how we deal with constraints, how we actually create really great opportunities for kids, how um, we learn and adapt so well in education, because that to me, it doesn't matter the organization that growth is essential that if you blockbuster yourself into a sense of what we're doing right now is going to be relevant 50 years from now, you're going to be in trouble. How do you continue to learn and grow? And there's no better people to teach that than educators. So really kind of meeting new people, connect with them uh, has made an impact. And the last one 
um, that I wrote down is I'm really trying to double down on the things that I think I do well, that I'm really passionate about. I, I, I love speaking. I, I love working with groups. I love um, consulting, but it was almost like embarrassing to talk about it. It was, I, it was like, I never really wanted to kind of promote and share that I was a speaker with people, but why wouldn't I, I, I love doing it. I know that I make an impact in the work that I do. And sometimes, you know, there's a nervousness that people make little comments about being a speaker and things like that, you know, which is interesting because if I criticize that profession or a different profession, I don't think it would go over too well. I think that this is something I'm really good at. And instead of always kind of looking to do other things, I think a lot of times um, we become numb to our gifts and then we don't pay attention to them. And this is something I'm really excited about. I have had the opportunity I've had. um, It's weird because I've actually had more time at home this year, but also I've actually spoke at more events because I've focused on really becoming better at my craft. A a friend of mine, uh, she's a speaker and she told me she's going to be in the area. And one of the first thing I said is like, um, she's speaking event. Can I come watch you? And I've been speaking for, I don't know, uh, 12, 13 years now. And when I say I'm doubling down on my gifts, it's not just about promoting, it's learning. It's getting better at what I do. I am going to go watch her, um, not only to support her, but I want to see what she does. And so I can learn from it to get better. And too often, um, we focus on what people can't do and we try to develop that where a lot of times what we should be doing is really focusing on what we're gifted at, what we, what we love to do and what we're passionate about and really kind of expanding that. And the world becomes so much better when people know their gifts matter. So that's kind of, um, that's the things that I've been focusing on and, and really improved. And like I said, you know, I've had so many great opportunities here. I, I really love this, um, this, this experience to, to be here. Um, and I'll tell you, like I was nervous, about the move. I was nervous about sharing it. And I was nervous about writing this podcast because it's, it, it, it's, um, it's, it's terrifying to say like, was this, you know, I've had a year. Has this been good? And then I started writing things down and I was like, yeah, I'm glad we made this move. I'm really glad that, um, I had the courage to do something different. And, and, and if you've ever seen me speak, I often talk about my parents and their, experience moving from another country to Canada and how daunting that must have been not knowing if you'd ever talk um, to your families again and I talk so glowingly about my parents because I've watched them learn and grow and have such an impact not only on myself but on the rest of the world I was talking to my brother the other day and he said my mom who's 86 went to the hometown that we grew up in and um, he went with um, his she went with his wife and his wife said it was like being with a celebrity, like being around my mom, because my mom was so loved in this town. So just that made me so proud to see that this restaurant that they had, um, you know, stuck with people and they made such an impact on this community. And part of that was because they were willing to take risks to try different things and really connect with people. And what I often say is I hope to God that one day my kids will look back at me the way I look back at my parents. That I was willing to try new things, that I was willing to grow, that I was willing to get better, that I was really willing to spend time, not only the things that matter, but more importantly, with the people that matter. And that's something I've really embraced this year. So I hope that in the lessons I've shared, some of the things I've learned, um, they help you in some way. And, uh, if you've probably, if you or if you're still here listening, I hope they have, I would love to hear from you. Um, let me know if anything resonated in the comments down below, but I just wanted to share with you, just kind of do a recheck and, and honestly leave this as a, um, I, w- I want my kids to see this one day so that they can kind of see, you know, one thing that I really struggle with is after my dad passed away, uh, there's a lot of things I, I wish I would have asked him and I wish I would have known. And when I look at this, this is an opportunity for my kids to um, maybe get some answers to some questions about their childhood and experience and why we did things that we did. So I just want to share that with you all. And 
uh, to my kids, I love you if you're watching this. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for all you do. Take care.